What's going on, guys? What's going on? What's going on? Welcome back to the channel, man. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are doing well. Man, it looks like P. Diddy has another lawsuit coming at him, man. Is this crazy or what, guys? Will somebody just go ahead and convict this man, try this man, convict this man, and just put this man away? Like they say, man, all the crazy stuff that you do in the dark, man, tends to come to light. We're going to get into it, man. We're going to get into it. I want you guys to check this out, man. Tell me what you think. Hit me up in the comments. Like, subscribe, notification bells. Hit me up, guys. I will hit you back. Let's get it popping. Let's get it popping. Diddy Combs, a music producer, is accusing hip-hop mogul of sexually assaulting him and forcing him to have sex with prostitutes. But a lawyer for Combs called the events described in the lawsuit pure fiction. This is now one of several sexual assault lawsuits filed against Combs in recent months, including a lawsuit from the R&B singer Cassie that was settled last year. To break this all down for us, I want to bring in trial attorney and ABC News contributor Brian Buckmeyer. So nice to see you. Oh, it's great to be so you've you've been covering this for for a while. I mean, you're familiar with Sean P. Uh, Diddy Combs. Not only does this lawsuit mention Diddy, it also includes other A-list celebrities. What stands out here to you? So if you see me looking down, I'm looking down at the 73-page complaint that was filed yesterday. In terms of allegations of celebrities, we're talking about Cuba Gooding Jr. being shown through still photos of what the complainant says they have videos of, of groping him. There are allegations of P. Diddy um, touching the genitalia and anus of the complainant. And also, if you look to the complaint here, there's a few Easter eggs here where it says the rapper redacted on Mr. Combs' yacht consorting with underage girls uh, and sex workers and you look down to the redaction, it says, well, the person is a Philly rapper who dated uh, Nicki Minaj. I think that may be Meek Mills. It also says an R&B singer redacted in Mr. Combs' Los Angeles home, consorting with underage girls and sex work. And when you go down to the redaction, it says he's a Grammy Award-winning R&B singer who had trouble with law enforcement after assaulting a Bayesian billionaire. I don't know who's a billionaire from Barbados that we know that dated someone. That sounds like Chris Brown. So there's a lot of big names here, both as Easter eggs and also just on the front pages of these allegations. Wow, just you. Yeah. Guys, this is crazy, man. This is crazy. I'm going to keep saying this again, man. What do, What's done in the dark tends to come to light. Am I right, guys? Huh? Man, there's always been rumors about Diddy. Seriously, man. I used to live in Atlanta, so I know how this thing rose when he had his um, Justin's restaurant down there, man. And they've always had these things, um, the, these these rumors coming about, about, out, about Diddy. And I'm, I'm telling you guys, we were taught at the age of our at the early age of 20 to avoid this guy because he was like the devil am i right guys like i said i'm in the music industry as well i've been in the music industry ever since i was a kid i'm singing quartet gospel all the way up to the r&b industry the secular music whatever you want to call it yes these rumors have been out about diddy for a long time let's get it guys chickens have came to roost the chickens have came to roost let's go now, the lawsuit also claims the misconduct happened during the creation of Diddy's latest album, the Love Album, and is seeking, as we've mentioned, $30 million. Uh, the suit not only names a mogul, but includes his son and Universal Music Group, claiming there is an alleged RICO enterprise to enable his misconduct. Explain why the lawsuit goes beyond Diddy and what's kind of at stake here. This, along with Cassie's uh, lawsuit that you talked about earlier that was settled, reads a lot like what we saw in the R. Kelly case in the EDNY, where they're talking about this being a criminal enterprise that's all feeding towards this one individual's uh, depravity of wanting drugs and sex and rock and roll, roll and everything in between, that everyone seemed to know and go out and facilitate what Sean Diddy Combs wanted. Even in part of these allegations or these complaints, they call his chief of staff the Ghislaine Maxwell to P. Diddy's uh, Jeffrey Epstein, saying that this was a total sexual enterprise to feed into uh, his desires. And we want to note that Diddy has denied all claims against him, but this can't possibly help his brand. Like, how do, where do you see this going, and, and, and where do you see this lawsuit going? 
again, I draw the comparison to, to that of R. Kelly, where there might have been rumors in the background. There were lawsuits that were settled. There were whispers uh, behind closed doors. But as those whispers start to grow and grow and get louder, you potentially could see greater civil litigation. They're saying in this case they want to fight it. Potentially we see a, a, a jury trial out of here. But this is based on sex trafficking allegations as well as claims that are criminal in nature. For me, I'm thinking SDNY, that being the Southern District of, Manha of New York, right here in Manhattan, they're probably looking at these allegations and thinking, where are the videos? Where are these still shots that we're seeing in these complaints? And can we investigate it to see if there's more here, potentially criminal charges? And that could guys, I'm telling you something right now, man. The chickens have came to roost for Diddy. Am I right, guys, or what, huh? Yes, sir, the chickens have came to roost for Diddy. He's had this coming for a long time and a long time like I don't know what. Give yourselves another round of applause for coming up to your Duane Elliott podcast. Thank you guys so much, man. We're going to get into the second part of this, man. One of Cassie's homegirls from back when Cassie filed her lawsuit is talking about Diddy and how, un how unprofessional he was in the recording studio. Let's get into it, guys. Let's get into it. Good evening, Ellison. Singer, songwriter, activist Tiffany Red had been working with Cassie on an album when she first met Diddy and says that she witnessed him verbally abusing her friend. Following Cassie's settlement with Diddy, Red penned an open letter in Rolling Stone about her experience. She spoke to me about the events that she says traumatized her. I don't think people understand what it's like to be traumatized by somebody famous and rich because you can't get away from them. Tiffany Red has written for the likes of Zendaya, Jason Derulo, and Jennifer Hudson. In 2015, she became friends with Cassie while writing songs for her album. At that point, Cassie and Diddy had been together for nearly eight years. In a lawsuit Cassie filed last month, she detailed the abuse she says Diddy committed, including physical assault. Red says although she did not know about the alleged physical assault while working with Cassie, she did witness verbal abuse on more than one occasion. One of which took place during Cassie's 29th birthday in 2015. Red says Diddy showed up at karaoke where Cassie and a group of friends were celebrating. So he had her back into the corner and he was like cussing her out with his hand in, his fit in her face. Later that night, Red, who was staying at Cassie's home, says she awoke to screaming. Oh, he's standing in the like living room area and she's there and he was like emotional singing. There you are. And I just was like, oh, he's talking to me. And I remember, like, I don't know if you know his, his what his voice sounds like, but, like, I felt like I was in the presence of his monster inside. And I remember, like, looking in his eyes, and I said to him, what did y'all do? Because I could see that she was, like, really sedated. That was the first time I'd ever seen her, like, high before. And then he says, tell your girl she wants some birthday Let me tell you guys something, man. Let me tell you guys something, man. It has always been, if people have always... Um, had these rumors about Diddy. Like, this is for one of the... Man, you have to look at the patterns, man. Any of Diddy's artists that he's worked with or produced, man, none of those artists, like 90% of those artists are not doing music today. Am I right, guys? That's a pattern, man. That's a pattern. Real talk. That's a pattern, man. That says a lot about a person when you... not, uh, not The majority of your artists are not even doing work today on the mainstream or period. Make it make sense. Am I right, guys? I've heard Demi Diddy has always wanted to be the star of the show. He's always wanted to be the star of the show. You know what I'm saying? Whenever in a, he can't keep groups together. Man, dude. Make, and here's the crazy part. He just gave his artists their masters back. Make that make sense. Oh, my goodness. When music isn't worth anything today because it's streaming. Make it make sense. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. And we were like, well, I mean, he's saying this to me. And I'm like, well, she doesn't have to have sex with you if she doesn't want to. He was upset. Like, you know, I guess sh that she didn't want to do with him whatever she, whatever he wanted. I don't know. I, I don't feel like I could advocate for myself in that moment. Like, I realized, like, oh, this guy is dangerous. Red says it was only a few months ago that Cassie told her what was really going on that night in 2015, that it all stemmed from the music executive wanting her to take part in what he called a freak-off against her will. What did Cassie tell you about these freak-offs? You know, that he would hire these, like, sex workers and, like, they would have, you know, sex with her or whatever and... 
he would watch and tell them what to do. In her lawsuit, Cassie alleges she was forced to participate in freak-offs throughout her relationship with Diddy. Red learning recently one horrific detail from Cassie. She told me the only time he was willing to do anything or work on her music, go through any um, plans, any of that, was when she had a freak off. So all of our music, all my work, to find out that like I spent all these years writing these songs for him to, to rape my friend to, like is just disgusting. In the lawsuit, Cassie detailed the physical abuse she says Diddy committed, including an instance where she was put in a hotel room for days to heal. Red says Cassie recently told her about Diddy giving her a black eye before the premiere of her 2016 film, The Perfect Match. I remember one time her telling me that I think it might have been the perfect match that that movie that she was in and she told me that she had a black eye under her makeup. Do you believe Diddy is a dangerous person? Yes. I do. Why? Money doesn't make you, man, I'm going to say this again, guys. Money doesn't make you a better person. If anything, it magnifies who you are as a person. Am I right, guys? Huh? <laughs> Man, we're dealing with some crazy times. I keep saying this. I keep saying this, guys. I keep saying this. 2024 is going to be a torture, a scorcher. Am I right, guys? Huh? Oh, yeah, man. It's going to be a scorcher, man. It's going to be a scorcher. Let's get back to it, man. Let's get back to it. I mean, look at his rap sheet. An attorney for Cassie declined to comment. Diddy's attorney did not respond. In 2015, Diddy was arrested on three counts of assault with a deadly weapon and other charges for allegedly beating up his son's football coach. Prosecutors declined to file felony charges related to that arrest. 24 hours after Cassie filed her lawsuit, she and Diddy announced that they had reached an undisclosed settlement. Combs released a statement saying, we have decided to resolve this matter amicably. I wish Cassie and her family all the best. His lawyer adding that the settlement was, quote, in no way an admission of wrongdoing. I mean, I just felt like it's PR. <laughs> He settled because he doesn't want to go to court. Yep. Diddy's music career spans three decades, including three Grammy Awards and the creation of Bad Boy Records, representing artists from Mary J. Blige to the late Notorious B.I.G. In September, he was awarded MTV's Global Icon Award. But since the allegations surfaced, Hulu scrapped a reality series about his family, and the Recording Academy said they are considering to rescind his invite to this year's Grammys. And I'm going to tell you guys something, man. I'm going to tell you guys something. They're going to keep hitting this guy till he has no money left. They're going to keep hitting him until he has no money left. Meaning what happens when he doesn't have any money left? Now he can't pay attorneys to keep his stuff under the, under, under the sweep his stuff under the carpet. He's going to be out of money and they're going to eat. This guy is going to eventually land in jail right next to R. Kelly. Make it make sense. Am I right, guys? Am I right? Huh? Real talk. Let's get back to it. Let's get back to it. Like, subscribe. Hit me up in the comments, boys. Hit me up. Hit me. Hit, hit the notification bell. All right, let's get to it. Let's go. You know, I think a lot of people, especially in, my, in in the black community, are you know, I've seen the narrative of like, you know, they just trying to take a black man down, and it's just like, that's not what this is about. That's not what this is about. This is about accountability, and and um, a reckoning like that's just the bottom line. Mm -hmm. As for what justice looks like, I think justice looks like Diddy being behind bars. And I also think that justice looks like everybody getting retribution for all of the things, the amount of therapy. Like I just said, all of my all of the moments, the time, like these are our careers. And Chloe is back with us now. You hear her saying justice looks like Diddy behind bars. Is there a possibility that could still happen? Where does the criminal case stand? So Cassie filed her federal civil suit here in New York. And the NYPD has come out and said that there is no investigation into Diddy right now. Now, that doesn't mean that the district attorney of Manhattan isn't looking into something or perhaps investigations going on behind the scenes. But publicly, on the record, no such investigation. 
investigation has been confirmed. And also, there have been other lawsuits of some women coming forward with other similar accusations and allegations. And who knows if others might come forward as well. Remember, the Adult Survivors Act is set to expire at the end of this month in the state of California. And we know that Diddy, that is where he has primarily, primarily resided. So you never know if others might come forward between now and the new year. And you spent so much time talking with Tiffany, and you can tell, even watching that back, not being in the room with her, that she has been so deeply impacted by what she says she witnessed. She has been able to sort of take this and turn it in a way, right? Can you explain that? So she calls herself an activist, right? She's not just a singer, songwriter, um, who's worked with so many stars, like I mentioned, Zendaya, Jason Derulo, Cassie. You know, she is somebody that has started an organization called the 100 Percenters, and that's she says comes from the fact that she always gives a hundred percent and this is about advocating for equal pay and fair rights for those who are both artists and writers and music producers and helping also get them out of archaic music contracts so she has turned her tragedy and her trauma into something positive but she said that speaking out to nbc news speaking out to us has helped her heal and she also wants to stand up for her friend Cassie and validate what's in that lawsuit. Guys, we are looking at a time of reckoning. Am I right or am I wrong, guys? We're looking at a time of reckoning, man. Diddy, you are going down, my brother. I'm just saying this to you personally, my brother. You are going down. As a matter of fact, man, we're going to end it off with Diddy's top security guard back in the day, Gene Deal. And Gene Deal has been coming for Diddy for years now, for at least a good five to 10 years and spilling the beans on Diddy and all of his antics back in the days, back in the 90s and the early 2000s and the mid 2000s. Diddy has firsthand accounts. I'm sorry, Gene Deal has firsthand accounts of how Diddy's antics are. And we're going to get into it, guys. This is Diddy's top security guard back in the day. Let's get into it, guys. Let's get into it. Let's go. This latest lawsuit against Diddy from, you know, the producer Little Rod. Man, you know, uh, uh, Leopard don't change his spots, and Diddy been doing this for a real long time, bro. He been doing this for a long time. And now another artist, this artist didn't wait 10 years. You know what I'm saying? He didn't wait 20 years. You understand? He waited a year or two after he stopped working with him and saw he didn't get what he was supposed to get. And he said, yo, listen here, man. I'm putting in my claims right now mm -hmm. because I'm going to show everybody what really happened, what really went down. It's, it's crazy. When I was reading it, I read the, the whole thing. Shout out um, uh, to uh, Keisha in Kansas City. She sent me the whole, the whole documentation, bro. And, you know, the whole court thing. And when I'm reading the stuff, you know, uh, it sounds from a lot of, a lot of it sound familiar. You understand? And what I mean sound familiar, how he would get other girls and get girls um, to try to, you know, convince this guy, you know, or, or, or put him in a sexual situation with other girls so he could do whatever he wanted to do with him. And it's, it's, it's just like the situation somewhat with Sarah and uh, her girlfriend and him and Ja. You know what I'm saying? Bringing girls on to try to convince this other guy to be in a room with another naked man and all his other bullshit. Yo, it, it all sounds familiar, man. Y'all, guys, Gene Deal has it in for Diddy. Am I right or what, guys? That's crazy. No, that's crazy. I'm sorry. And Gene Deal has been speaking like this, guys, for at least a few years now. Man, I'm telling you guys what's done in the dark tends to come to light. You guys want to get out here and jump into the music game, the entertainment game, period, and deal with this. And I'm telling you guys, this is still going on now. Am I right, guys? This is still going on now. Yes, sir. Let's get into it, man. Let's get into it. Let's go. I, I, I read the whole thing, man, and it was crazy. And for the people that don't know what you're talking about, because the lawsuit is new, so, you know, some people still catching up with it. Little Rod, he alleges that, you know, young Miami cousin tried to have sex with him in front of Diddy. Yeah, he went into the bathroom, and then she came into the bathroom and tried to, uh, 
you know, throw herself on him. He didn't want to have nothing to do with her for whatever reason. And then when he came out the bathroom, she continued to try to do that and try to have sex and uh, want him to have sex in front of uh, Diddy and the rest of the people that was in there. You know, that that's that's how they do, man. They try to use a girl that you might like or you may think you might like or they think you might like her or whatever to convince you to lay down your guards with them. And he didn't. Yeah, that's crazy, man. And you're not surprised by none of this because you said that Ja Rule, they did this to him, right? No, remember, remember, and people got confused when I said that Ja and him was in the room with two girls, with, with, with Sarah and Sarah's girlfriend. You understand? He was trying to get Ja to go at Jay-Z. So what he did was try to get another girl, you understand, to do something with Ja. I guess, I don't know, they in the room together. So when they in, in in that thing, I know what he was planning on doing because I heard the conversation. I knew what was going on. He was trying to get at Ja. So if he got Ja in any kind of uncompromising position, he could force Ja to go at Jay Z. So that's just a a a a a a, 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 a thing that they use. Lil Rod, he get him in a sexual position and a sexual situation with some kind of girl, and then maybe have get him high, get him drunk or whatever like that. He don't know what he's doing. One of the guys step in and now he doing Lil Rod. Now Lil Rod all messed up in the mind because he started off with a girl, but now he end up with a guy. He trying to put him in some kind of situation like that. Guys, this screams insecurity to me, man. Insecurity to me. Am I right or am I right, guys? Huh? I've been around some big wigs, man. Some big, some big named cats man and i've seen this pattern man just in their personalities and guys you have to really think about it man listen just look at the patterns man look at these patterns none of these people know each other personally and they're all coming out with these lawsuits now make it make sense make it make sense this is gonna be crazy man 2024 is the reckoning 2024 is the reckoning mark my words am i right guys let's get to it let's get to it Let's go. They do that all the time in the industry. I want to get into this real quick, man, before we really even get started into this. And it's because something I seen today, this girl, Tiffany Red, she said that she was filing a claim against Diddy. But it, my man, it touched me crazy, man, because the hurt that I seen in her voice, in her her, she crying, man, and she worrying about what this dude could do to her and what he has done to her. Man, listen here. I want to let this young lady know, and I know this is not the place for it, brother, but please allow me to say this to her, man. You know what I'm saying? I started this battle long time ago. Mm. And the situation is, is that, bruh, we already won. This was some spiritual shit that mm -hmm. pop the spirit of pop the spirit of big the spirit of miss jones the spirit of wolf all the people that he has done wrong you know so black all the people that he has done wrong bro mm -hmm. is coming to light mm -hmm. we already won this sh spiritual what we going through right now with these trials and everybody you know with this financial situation and everything like that all that is superficial that's that that's the that's the physical part of it. The spiritual part of it was one because Big, Pac, Wolf, Wolf Mother, all the people that he did wrong, bro, you understand? They already won the battle where we were supposed to win it at. So now we just going through the physical part of it, man. And I want that girl to know, man, that she ain't got to fear no man. She ain't got to fear him, nobody else, man. Whenever she needs you understand? Whenever she needs somebody to travel, to go with her, to make sure she all right, you know, I'm a phone call away, man. Gene Dill just went into the paint with that with a man. Yeah, he did, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is so dope. And like I said, man, the mere fact that he's talking about it and that I just did a reaction to her right before him, man. These cats are coming together, man, to fight these evil principalities and these evil forces, these evil dark forces coming against God's people. 
It is what it is. Let's keep it rolling, guys. Let's keep it rolling. Like, subscribe, comment, notification bell, guys. Hit me up, guys, and I will hit you back in the comments, all right? Hit me up. Let's go. Let's roll. I'm a phone call away. And I'm, and you know, go ahead with your questioning, man. I just had to get that out, man, because that girl touched a lot of people, man, mm. because all she wanted to do was write music, make music, and, 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 and show her talent and her love to the people, man. And then she got to feel this way, be fearful and scared of her life and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Ma, I ain't scared of no man. You understand? I ain't scared of no man. Nobody that got to put their pants on the same way I do. Not at all. And for the people that don't know who Tiffany Red is, that's Cassie's best friend. That's one of Cassie's friends. She was writing a lot of music and she said that she was writing music for her friends to get raped to. Oh, my God. Man, come on, man. Man, guys, make it make sense. Make it make sense, guys. Make it make sense. Hope you guys, thank you guys so much for coming in for another episode of the Duan Elliott Podcast. I hope you guys are doing well, man. Thank you. Give yourselves a round of applause, man. Give yourselves a round of applause for another show, man. Guys, I keep saying it, man. I keep saying it, man. What's done in the dark is coming to light and especially in 2024, and I will hate, I would hate, man, this is why I try to treat people good, man, because I would hate to be somebody's pharaoh in their life. It is what it is. Thank you guys so much, man, for coming in for another episode of the Dwan Elliott Podcast. Give yourselves another round of applause, man. <laughs> guys, I'm dropping episodes, man, every couple of days, every couple of days at 2 p.m., man. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and remember those likes are free. Thank you guys so much, man. Peace.